sharp enough to kill a deer, for sure. 200 grain Alaskans, grizzly stick Alaskans, single beveled. They are, they feel sharper to the touch and I think they're made out of a higher quality metal. But this will be my first year shooting a single bevel broadhead so I'm excited to see how they work. Hopefully we get to test it out here in the next couple days. I've shot mostly expandables in the past but that was mostly because I didn't really know much about bow tuning and now I took some time to learn well, how to do that this off season so I know how to make a fixed blade fly well. We got two hours till season opens. Yeah. Right here. Takes some getting used to, but definitely gonna be nice. Look at this poor guy. Two. Lift off. Right All right, we're legal, folks. Deer tours. You can now hunt deer in North Dakota. But I gotta get a bunch of stuff ready yeah, as far as uh, saddles and what we're gonna climb with. Just let them play around on the ground like this. Or me. Good choice for kids or <laughs> kids. It's like, uh, what's that game where you hit the ball around the pole? What's it called? The, the ball. tether ball? Yeah. Well, makes sense, huh? Yeah, okay. See how that works. No, I'm not doing it. That's <laughs> yeah. enough. That's enough. <laughs> I used my turkey vest last year when I shot that buck with the rifle in Wisconsin. Uh, I packed the bee sticks in the back of it, they slide in nice and Greg gave me this handy, what's it called Greg, that little Night eyes gear tie. Night eyes gear tie, that kind of keeps things from moving around. This turkey vest is super light, don't have the seat on it. It's a woman's vest, I get a lot of flack for that, but it's small and it fits me well. I got all these pockets, everything's right here, and then when I wear uh, the saddle, everything is underneath the vest. So. I don't have to take this off or anything. I can probably just wear it in the tree. This is gonna be my first time bow hunting with it, but I used it for gun hunting. It's worked pretty good, so. Gonna try it out, see how it works. You guys know the season's open, right? Yeah. You guys just gonna sit in here then, or? No, getting ready to go out here. All right. Feels like it's coming out of the northeast, floating enough right now where it's that perfect option? wind for that. Think about it. If there's one thing I'll be doing, it'll be thinking. It's a thing, like I don't really know how those deer are going to come out of that. It's actually not good. They don't want to blow them off that field again. I'm not going to burn up that spot that you all are going either. You going to learn something, I'd say? Idea on where you might go? No, not yet. I mean, I got a half a dozen ideas, I guess. I mean, the wind is supposed to pick up through the evening. That would be good, too. Any well, idea where you're going yet? Uh, getting closer. I'll probably just sit here all night and him and haul around about it and then eventually end up somewhere. Sounds good. Maybe you'll get one. <laughs> And I get that it's opening day, but... Warb's making up his mind. I'll change it again. Oh no. Our initial plans have changed. The spot I wanted to go to, me and Greg saw all those bucks in last night. Wind's not behaving properly. We'd just be shitting ourselves on the foot there, I think. I got three or four spots that I've been pinning. I have had a purpose for sitting here in this truck scouting for the last hour. I am very indecisive, yes, but I try to have a plan. I've got three or four spots that I pinned. We're gonna cruise around every one of them and try to walk in there and look for sign at all. And the last spot that I have is pretty close to where we were hunting last night. Scouting. Oh, scouting, sorry. Obviously it wasn't hunting season yet. But Greg and I saw a couple bucks like a mile off. So that's where we're gonna go should we strike out on these first couple guesses. Got my hummus, we're ready to go. And now Down it's to just you and me. <laughs> yup. And the laptops. Some cooking, some cleaning, some editing. Wait to hear what happens. Check one, two, check testing one, two. All right, we made it. We've got, I don't know how far the walk is exactly. It's close to a mile though, down the edge of this field. We're gonna slow down quite a bit once we get up to where this tree line starts because I think deer could be bedded right in this tree line along the field, so. That's why I've got my release on, just in case anything jumps up or we sneak up on anything. But we're gonna take our time once we get towards the end, but we're gonna start walking now because I would like to leave a little bit sooner than we did.
didn't see her till we got probably 15 yards away and there's a fawn bedded right there. We're just taking a couple steps and then being quiet and listening and glass up in front of us. Deer make a ton of noise when they go through fields like this too. And I think if you try to walk like a deer and not like a human, you can get close to them like that. I think that's something you gotta do is like stay right on my hip in case we get close to a buck, you know, cause he's probably not gonna give us a lot of time. Saddles, he can jump around the tree quite a bit. The only cover is low on this tree, so we, we decided to sit low. You're straight on the back side, and I'm straight on the back side. And I can shoot him at maybe six yards there or ten yards right there. I'm gonna have to think about what I'm gonna do. If I'm gonna draw early, or if he's moving slow, maybe he'll turn his head or put his head down or something. There's something over there, Kyle. Bouncing. Yeah, he's bouncing. He's right behind that bush along the edge. I'm pretty sure it's that same buck. He's hard horned. He's literally right where those guys were standing when they saw him the other day. Might be a nicer buck than the one they, that we saw too, I don't know. Either way, he's big enough for me. If nothing else happens tonight, we got a pretty good plan for tomorrow. Yeah, that's it, so. If he's gonna be Especially with good wind. doing that, yeah, that's sweet. I don't know what time it is, but it's pretty early like that. I mean, he could legit make it all the way over here yet. Mm -hmm. It's only 6.41. We're kind of in a clustered setup, but the biggest trail that goes by us, I can shoot at that point blank, and our wind is now consistent and blowing right in my face. I like this setup. Can't shoot much to the right, but I can shoot everything out in front of me here. So we came out to this open tree kind of off of where the fence row is, and we can see this entire area back here. We saw a coyote a couple hundred yards away on the opposite side of this ditch. And just like we were hoping, we were able to observe that buck. And the reason that we're not right over there where he's at right now, we had confidence that he was gonna be in there, but our wind is just really variable today. And we looked at the forecast and tomorrow it's gonna be a really consistent wind. So we're gonna get to glass and that buck's up on his feet already. There's that coyote over there. He's hunting, we're hunting. All right, me and Dylan made it back in here. We walked from way over there. And right here behind me, you can see this bigger tree. This is the tree with the licking branch on the bottom of it, where Greg and I saw that big buck come up and work it last night. In fact, there was like three or four deer all around that tree. And I'm looking at the branches on the bottom of it and they're all snapped off. I would like to be in that tree, but it's so dead gum thick up there. If we did both get in there, I don't think I'd have any shot opportunities. So, I don't know how far is that, 25, 20? 20 from there, probably. We're gonna get in this bush right here. That way, if, I, if a buck comes out across this field, because this field is where they staged up last night. Right here's the public-private line. And I got permission from the farmer to walk in through his field today. So we're gonna jump over on the public side, and hopefully we're gonna shoot a buck underneath that tree on the public side tonight. Oh, nice buck along the edge of the corn over there, closer to us. Maybe the one from earlier. He's huge, Grant. I just filmed the farthest left branch, and you'll be filming him. He's got.
got his head down now, but he's really, really big. These does are coming up behind us. We just keep watching them, though. See him? Yeah. Jeez. Yeah, What's that? He's real big. Well, we haven't really been able to do an update, but it is 7.30. We got a whole other hour yet. We've seen at least seven or eight bucks. One of them was huge, wide frame, tall antlered. He was big, big anywhere. <laughs> we knew we were gonna see deer tonight. We we're getting up into a spot where, I mean, we can just see the world, but I mean, I, I could look in any direction out in front of me and I can see a deer right now. It's pretty crazy, actually. <laughs> if a buck comes up this trail, like we're gonna, we're gonna get a shot at him, I think. And then that'll still all be fresh over there tomorrow if we don't end up getting a shot at something tonight. But we're gonna get back to Glasson and I'm gonna see if I can find that buck again. He kind of went into a low spot, but we might be able to see him again tonight, I think. There's deer everywhere, though. I hope, I hope Orb and Dylan are learning something, too. It's about 7.30, and we're expecting the deer movement to start in the next 30 minutes or so. The wind has been finicky all night, but for the last 30 minutes or so, it's been coming straight out of the north which is about perfect. It's very, very calm now. Last night they started moving about eight o'clock. And, and we saw five different bucks in here that I would have shot. So they'd want to come to this tree and work one of these looking branches. back out over there. Straight to the left of that tree again. That one must be looking at a deer that's between us and him or something. He's just staring hard. I'd say uh, that's where we'll be tomorrow evening. Should I bugle at him? <laughs> See if he responds. Oh yeah, he's nice. He's really nice. He's in now. There's a different deer though. Yeah, there's another pretty nice buck with him. With that one? Yeah. Well, I mean, we're gonna have to get down and do something different if he's gonna start walking this way. Because we're not gonna be able to shoot him out of here, I don't think. Is that the same one? I don't think that it is. I think the other one was more tall. <laughs> it's good problems to have. I mean, the same regardless, there's way too many of them back in there. We need to go shoot one. Another one coming up behind them. Mm -hmm. I think we for sure get down because I'm not going to be able to get a shot at him from up here. Yeah. I think we can do that right now and then maybe we can glass them right here and I mean if they start coming over here do. then we'll sit here but let's get down. You see him coming out to the left of that tree, see him? 
They're right behind him. They're coming through that opening. The other ones are in front of him. That got interesting there. I mean, they were walking straight at us two, three different times. Well, a lot just happened. You guys saw that we were getting down. The reason for that was because they were so far away, I didn't think that they were gonna make it. I either didn't think that they were gonna make it over here in time for us getting a shot, or I didn't think that I would be able to make a shot out of that tree. So we got down and we were just gonna sit either in these bushes here, if we had time, we were gonna move up. And if we wanna went a little faster, we might've got up to a spot where we could've got a shot at them. But we saw that they went down into the uh, the bottom down there and they spent a ton of time in a little spot over there to we, where we first saw that biggest one. And they just milled around there for probably close to an hour, if not more. I'm sure they're bedding real close to the edge of that cornfield over there. And we have a south wind tomorrow, which will be blowing straight into the cornfield. So we might be able to make some sort of setup in the cornfield over there or somewhere where they traveled through right in front of us here. but. It seemed like they fed around where they were bedded over there for a while. And then once they decided they were going to start moving, they kind of just marched all the way across this piece. They must be going somewhere up in there to feed next. But pretty exciting night. Aaron and I, we were driving down this driveway. And he's like, we should just start calling bucks, like big bucks, substantial animals. That was a substantial animal. <laughs> he fits that category. <laughs>